It's an unmistakable Pictou County landmark, the Northern Pulp Mill. And not far away, Nova Scotia's dirty little secret. This is Boat Harbor. For decades, governments dithered while toxins flowed from the mill into this once pristine body of water. Still do. Now, finally doing something about this province's worst environmental scar is dividing the community. Pictou County, like a lot of rural places, has had a hard scrabble life. But for 52 years, it's had the mill dominating its skyline, paying hundreds of good salaries, sustaining families here for generations. Yet, truthfully, it's always been a love-hate relationship. And these days, there's a growing crisis of conscience here. People know they have to break up with Boat Harbor, find another way, end the unthinkable pollution they have caused once and for all. But the stakes are high, very high. Not everyone is willing to bite the hand that has fed them for so long. I worked at that pulp mill for 25 years. I don't want to see it closed, mm -hmm. but I don't want to see anything harmed out there either. I know fishermen, I know people that work at the mill, but it's the environment that I'm worried about. There must be another solution there somewhere. The solution, according to the mill owners, is a pipe to carry treated effluent from the mill's property directly to the Northumberland Strait away from Boat Harbor to the water beyond. No way! No way! And that has sparked outrage. Some here fear that allowing the new pipe is akin to making another deal with the devil. That's because Picto is also a fishing community. We do not want this pipe in our waters. Last summer, fishermen took to the strait in the largest protest ever seen in these parts. Ben Anderson, a fifth generation lobster fisherman, was part of that protest. He fears for his livelihood, the same way the mill workers fear for theirs. How much of your life do you have riding on the health of the Northumberland Strait? Everything, pretty well. House, the gear, the boats, Everything day in and day out income. I live basically off what I make per trap. If I catch no lobsters, I make no money. And it goes for pretty well everybody else that's in the same ballpark. There'd be a lot of angry people. A lot of angry people. But fishermen here have a fierce ally, the Mi'kmaq First Nations. And the children that spoke today, we do this for you. We're gonna for Picto here. Landing First Nations Chief Andrea Paul, Boat Harbor is personal. Whatever the solution for the effluent, closing Boat Harbor is about righting a historical wrong against her people. I definitely think it was environmental racism and they had no regard for the people that lived around the area. It wasn't doing anything, just existing. No one is using it, they said. Let's dump the effluent there. In the 60s, the province used the Indian Act to take, some say swindle, the land from the Mi'kmaq. The deal was the mill owners would only build in Pictou County if they had a place to dump their effluent. The government of the day, desperate for jobs, assumed all responsibility for the environmental damage and let the company pollute Boat Harbor. This is the outlet from Boat Harbor. And this is what's going into the sea. Picto Landing First Nation was promised there would be no impact. But days after the effluent entered Boat Harbor, all the fish were dead. You hear the stories of people going down to gather their fish and the fish are all, they're all up in the surface and they're just, they're, they're gulping and they're, they're, and you can, and they talk about, they can just go in and scoop them up. How painful. That must have been. Incredibly, for years, governments of all political stripes defended the darkened water and the dirty foam. We have in Nova Scotia uh, brownish waters naturally. It's called good Nova Scotia bog water. 
Now, shamed by it all, Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil vows to do what other political leaders promised and failed to deliver on, close Boat Harbour for good. Well, quite frankly, it's unacceptable uh, that in the 1960s that uh, Boat Harbour was put there because it's next to an Aboriginal community. Uh, this may have been acceptable to create, a, uh, uh, to create Boat Harbour in the 60s. It's not okay today. Well, we feel we gave them five years. Uh, and I've been very clear about that, uh, that on January 31st, 2020 is our deadline. That's less than a year away, and the mill is still a long way from having an acceptable solution for its effluent. The reality is stark. Either the government will have to break its promise to Pictou Landing First Nation, or the mill will be forced to shut down, at least until a viable solution is found. And as that reality sinks in, Tension rises. Everyone has an opinion on which is the lesser evil, and they're tiptoeing around their neighbors. Just ask Jack Fraser, a former mill worker. You can feel the tension when you're walking around. You're, you're, you know, you're picking your words. And I, I'm nervous that uh, there's going to be something happen, like somebody's going to get killed or something over foolishness. And here's why the mill is so important to so many. Each year, 42,000 truckloads of wood chips, bark and round wood is sold to this pulp mill from sawmills and woodlots all over. If Northern Pulp closes, the fear is the forest industry would falter. You know, people are saying, oh, it's only the 300 jobs at the mill. No, it's not. It's, it's 11,000, 12,000 plus jobs. You know, the people that sell tires, sell gasoline, you know, sell building supplies. Like, it's, it's widespread, boy. What do you see when you look at this? What do you see? Yeah, I see the effluent from the mill being treated to the point where it passes all effluent regulations. But Walking around Boat Harbour, Northern Pulp's Mike Wilson points out there isn't a bleached craft pulp mill on the planet that doesn't have an effluent pipe coming out of it. If you want white toilet paper, you have to deal with toxic effluent. He believes a new pipe into the Northumberland Strait will pass an environmental review. Trust the science, he says. You're probably used to this, but that's kind of taken my breath away, I gotta say. That's, that's a strong smell. Again, this will all be on site. But is the water gonna be any cleaner at the end of the day? It will be equivalent to what's going out now, which again was meets the regulations. But here's the rub. The company is asking to keep Boat Harbor open another year so it can get its plan for a pipe in place. In other words, trust us, too. Problem is, trust has been pretty bruised up in Pictou County over the years, according to Ben Anderson. But what if the science says that's not the case, that it's okay to put a pipe in the strait? I'd like to see the signs to begin with that they talk about. Because would, you, would you believe it if, if it if I it don't said know. That? I honestly don't know, because they said science was good for Boat Harbour. So what kind of science is that? And it, it's void of life. So if that's the science we're looking at, I'm pretty skeptical in my own personal opinion. If a pipe was to pass a provincial environmental review, the Premier believes the fishery, forestry and pulp industries could all coexist. But he won't break his word to the Mi'kmaq people by giving the company more time. We've given them a five-year window. You're not going to back down on that? Well, we've given them a five-year window. Now, Chief Andrea Paul is upping the ante. It's not just about the pipe or Boat Harbour anymore, it's about the mill itself. I think it needs to close, and I've never said that out loud. Why are you saying that now? Because they haven't done what they should have been doing. And I believe that the mill, they've been able to do what they've always wanted to do. And I think enough is enough. And so for now, there it sits. The mill still pouring waste into Boat Harbor, contaminated, discolored. The controversy churns on and a community's future seems no more clear. Tom Murphy, CBC News, Abercrombie, Nova Scotia. Now across the Northumberland Strait in Prince Edward Island, the Premier there has raised concerns about the environmental impact on his province. But yesterday, the Prime Minister chimed in, seeming to rule out a federal assessment.
We uh, understand and respect the fact that it's a provincial lead uh, going through the uh, environmental assessments, uh, but the federal government is also looking into uh, ways that it can support, and that is uh, something we take very seriously. Nova Scotia's Environment Minister, Margaret Miller, is supposed to decide by March 29th whether the new affluent treatment plan can be granted conditional approval.